Hello. Hello. You hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Who is this one? This little one? Huh? Tehasa? Yes? Who is sitting next to you? My friend. Your friend, what's her name? Vinoy. Huh? Vinoy. Vinoy. Vinori. Vinori. How old is she? Eight. Eight. Okay. Now, uh, <coughs> Anaya and uh, Vidat, Dasun. There is an iPhone of somebody without name. Huh? Uh, good afternoon, Bante. This is... Uh, I have just turned on the kids' channel. This is Nirmala. Vimala. Nirmala. Oh. Nirmala. Yes, Bante. <laughs> I am uh. 54 years old. I still want to listen. <laughs> oh, little yeah. child. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, <coughs> I want to continue our talks on uh, Mangala Sutta. Now it is uh, time as usually. Uh, we have the talk at uh, 3 o'clock. <coughs> uh, we started uh, Bangala Sutta last week. This is the second talk. We recited the second stanza of Bangala Sutta. First one was uh, Bahudeva Manusacha. Second one is Buddha's reply. First one was uh, asking the Buddha to tell what the blessings are. Then Buddha started telling them what the blessings are. First he said, Asevanacha Balanang, Panditanancha Sevana. Puja cha puja niyanang etang mangala muttamang. How many of you can recite this? Can you raise your hand and tell that you can recite it? Asse, last week we recited it. I think it is better for all of you to memorize this stanza. Asevanacha Balanang. Well, I did not hear. Repeat after me. Asevanacha Balanang. Hello? Say Asevanacha Balanang. Asevanacha Balanang. Pandita Nancha Sevana. Pandita Nancha Sevana Puja Cha Puja Niyanam Puja Cha Puja Niyanam Etang Mangala Muttamang Etang Mangala Muttamam Okay. I heard at least one. It's okay. <laughs> You do it on yourself. The meaning of this stanza is to associate not with the foolish, foolish, to be with the wise, to honor the worthy ones. This is a blessing supreme. There Buddha has mentioned three Factors. One is 
not associating with the foolish. Second is to associate with the wise. Third is to honor worthy ones. Last week we discussed who the fools are, the qualities on fools and the qualities that make one a fool or foolish. In this talk, I like to talk on the opposite of it, second factor, that is the wise. Who is the wise? Wise person does not bring peril, does not bring any danger to anybody. Fools bring danger to oneself, his associates, his family, even his country, or he can bring danger to the whole world. Say, for instance, a fool has a power to drop hydrogen bomb. He can destroy the whole world because he is very, very foolish that he kill billions of people. So all the danger comes from the fool. But from the wise, no danger comes. No da danger will be prevented by the, by the wise person. Not only wise person does not bring danger to anybody, but even he even prevents it from happening. Second, he does not bring calamity to the oneself as well as to others. He does not bring misfortune to oneself as well as to others. Misfortune is something that we foolishly create. Wise person, even under mis unfortunate situation, remains steady, calm, and composed, and learn to overcome misfortune. We will discuss all this later in as he go on talking. And uh, wise person has bodily good conduct. He has, has body, uh, verbal good conduct, mental good conduct. That means wise person does not have, does not uh, break the precepts. He does not kill, steal and commit sensual misconduct. These are the three things that wise person does not do bodily, with his body. Verbally, wise person does not tell lie. Wise person does not slander. Wise person does not use harsh words and wise person does not gossip and the white wise person does not have excessive greed greedy wise person does not become greedy for somebody's property somebody's achievement Wise person does not cultivate hate.
Now you can hear me? Yes. There was some problem. Uh, Zoom was disconnected. I was telling you all that the wise person, you try to remember this or write down the points. Uh, I said wise person's bodily conduct is good. What is the bodily conduct? Uh, abstaining from killing, abstaining from stealing, abstaining from sensual misconduct. The verbal condition conduct is good. What is the verbal conduct? Not telling lies. Not using slanderous talk. Not using harsh language. Not gossiping. Four things he doesn't do with the mouth. Then Mental good, good conduct is he will not be very greedy, especially he will not uh, gre be greedy for somebody's property, somebody's belongings. He will not be jealous of that. Rather, he appreciate it. Secondly, he will not conceive grudge, he will not have hatred. Thirdly, he will not have wrong views. Wrong views is very dangerous. With wrong views, people do many dangerous things. Wrong view is more dangerous than anything else because such a person can destroy everything. But good person, wise person doesn't do any, any of this. Wise person sees transgression as transgression. That means wise person, if committed an offense, if something, a white, wise person may, some, makes a mistake, wise person admit that mistake and say, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. So he accepted and he tried to make, try to correct himself or apologize. When you apologize, you feel very comfortable. You don't feel guilty all the time. Then he correct himself. Then because uh, he follows the honest, honest way. He likes to be honest and sincere. He doesn't like to be a hypocrite. He, say he remains to be very honest and sincere. Another is a wise person uh, accept his mistakes and confess according to Dhamma. Then, uh, wise person when asked questions, the wise person asks the question clearly and correctly. He makes the 
question very clear uh, so that the uh, other person understand the question. Sometimes people who are not very wise uh, try to ask, ask questions, but questions are not very clear. Uh, the wise person uh, formulate the question clearly because the mind is clear. With the clear mind, that person asks questions very clearly. That is the sign of wisdom. Clarity in the mind is the sign of wisdom. If somebody asks a confusing question, uh, deliberately or unintentionally, the person is not wise. Then, other person who answer the question, ask is clearly to the point. He doesn't beat around the bush. He doesn't waste his time or time of the other people. So, these are some very wonderful qualities of the wise person. Another thing is, when somebody points out your mistakes, when somebody points out your mistake, you must thank the person for pointing to your, to your mistake. Then you are wise. If you get angry when somebody points out your mistake, you are not going to be wise. Such a person, a person who shows you a mistake, points out your mistake, should be respected and think that he showed you a treasure. Showed you a treasure. How and why? Because from your mistake you learn. Correct yourself. Most of the time we don't see our mistakes. If somebody points out, we must thank the person, accept the mistake, and correct yourself. That is what wise person does. If you simply get angry when somebody points out your mistake, you will not correct yourself, you will not improve yourself, and you will not become wise. Then you must respect and be associate with such a person. Uh, <coughs> so, one who points, one who teaches Dhamma and you follow it, you become wise. When somebody teaches you Dhamma and if you do not listen and learn and accept it and do not try to live according to that, then you are not wise. The wise are those beings who enter upon the ways of wholesome karma, abstain from destructive of life and so forth. The wise person commit wholesome karma because he knows, he or she knows that wholesome karma brings wholesome results, good results and therefore always think of doing something wholesome. So, the wise person, like uh, guards 
in time of danger. When you associate with the wise, that person is like a god who protects you from dangers. Like a lamp lit in the dark so that you can see objects in the dark when there is light. When uh, uh, they are able to dispel all the perils, disasters, calamities and dangers. That is what the white person, wise person does. Thus, by relying on the one who shows us the way to become happy, we must follow that person. That is this wise. That is what wise person uh, does. Wise person has patience, lot of patience. We practice patience. I tell you a little story. You know Buddha had a disciple called Sariputta. One of the two chief disciples called Sariputta. Sariputta was known for his patience. One day Sariputta was going on his arms round, taking arms ball. Those days monks took arms ball. You, you probably might have seen us using arms ball at our center. So when the Sariputta took his arms ball in the morning and went on arms round collecting food, then there were a bunch of people sitting by the roadside and one of the, they, they said that uh, Sariput, this monk, is very, very patient. Wise person have patience. Sariputta was very wise. Buddha said, among all the wise monks, Sariputta was number one. Very wise person. And that he was famous for his wisdom, his patience. So when he was going with arms round, for, for arms round, bunch of people said, this monk is very wise, he's a, he's a patient, he has a lot of patience. But one of them said, come on, he cannot be that patient. They said, yes, he has patience. This monk went behind the monk, went to my Sariputta, and gave a very big blow to his back. The blow was so strong that Sariputta was thrown few feet ahead. Venerable Sariputta even did not turn back to see who hit him, beat him. This man felt very sad. He became very remorseful. Immediately he went in front of Venerable Sariputta and asked him to forgive him. As if nothing has happened, Venerable Sariputta asked him, why do you ask me to forgive you? He said, because I beat you. Or did you? He said, yes. Okay, I forgive you. Don't worry. This man said, if you really forgive me, could you have lunch in my house? So, Venerable Sariputta accepted that invitation. Went with him. This man prepared very delicious 
sumptuous meal and offered it to Vendabar Sariputta. But while he was eating, Sariputta heard some commotion outside. People were challenging him. People, were, people gathered around this man's house because they had heard that this man beat Vendabar Sariputta. And they were so upset, they wanted to beat this man. So they said, get him out, get him out, beat him, beat him, get a club, get a rock. We must beat him with fist. They were saying things like that. Then Vendabar Sariputra thought, oh, oh, now this man is going to get into trouble. Vendabar Sariputra thought of helping him. So he, after meals, after washing his hand, Vendabar Sariputta gave his arms ball to this man and said, you follow me. When he was coming out of the house with Vendabar Sariputta, people asked Vendabar Sariputta to get his arms ball back. Sariputta asked him why, asked them why. Because we, if we carry his arms ball, we cannot beat him. We want to beat him. Sariputta asked, why do we want to beat him? Because he beat, beat you up. Ah, if he beat me up, I have already forgiven him. You all don't worry. You all go home. So seeing this Vendamar Sariputta's patience, all these people went home without hurting this man. This is what normally very wise persons do. They avoid, prevent quarrels, prevent troubles, prevent uh, fighting. That is what Venerable Sariputta did. That is what a wise person does. When one uh, associates with the wise person, Buddha said, associate with the wise person. When you associate with the wise person, you become wise. You know, you become wise. If you associate with the fool, you become foolish. Because the foolish person, you try to uh, be friendly with fools and follow what fools does. And you become foolish. You get into trouble. If you associate with the wise, you become wise. It is just like a fool associate with the wise even entire his life he will never become wise. Just like a spoon, I mentioned this last time, just like a spoon, you use the spoon to stir your curry, your soup and so forth, but a spoon never tastes soup. Never taste curry. But if you are wise and associate with the wise, you become wise very much like the tongue that as soon as you put something into your tongue, you taste the food, you taste the soup, you taste the honey. Whatever you put in your tongue, you taste it. Similarly, wise person, even he or she associates with the wise person for very short, for a short period of time. That person learns many things from the wise person and tries to be wise. Then, <clears throat> it is just like when you have a, a sandalwood. If you take sandalwood 
and wrap up in a piece of cloth, the cloth also become that has will have that fragrance of sandalwood. If you wrap up the cloth in uh, dirt, you smell dirt. The clothes really become dirty, dirt smelling. So, uh, one day there is a Sakka, ruler of the Devas. His name is Sakka. One day he said to his uh, other deities, may I see and listen to a wise person and may I dwell together with the wise. May I converse with the wise one and may I approve of him. Wise people can make history, can wise people are respected by everybody. People go to the wise person to get advice. People go to wise person to get consultation. Not only the one who learn things from books, there are many people who learn things from books but few of them become wise. The wise person does not get angry. Even other people scold him, insult him, abuse him. Wise person does not get upset. It is just like trying to, however much you try to warm up the water in the ocean with the little torch, you cannot warm up the ocean water. Similarly, wise person remains like ocean. No matter how much we put dirt into the ocean, ocean will simply very quickly push them back to the shore. You try to put all the any dirt to the ocean, ocean doesn't keep them. Ocean just push them back with waves to the shore. And similarly, wise person remains wise, patient, and does not take anything personally and get upset. He just, all the dirt, insults, ignore. And the wise person always follows what is right. He or she does not enjoy what is wrong and reckless. And it is very easy for someone to guide wise person in the right direction. Very easy to talk to. Unwise people, foolish people get upset very quickly when you talk. Even if you have friendly conversation, sometimes Foolish people get upset, wise person does not get upset. They always listen very carefully and easy to have a conversation. So, we try to associate with such wise people and try to be wise. That is a blessing, Buddha said. To associate with the wise 
and to be be wise is a blessing and you like to be wise and try to make others wise then it is a blessing you are happy they are happy the world is happy family is happy that's a blessing so that is today's talk and we lost few minutes but i caught up with that by going little over time and now it is your time your turn to ask me questions okay start your questions okay how do you identify a wise person if you don't know them ah uh, that's a very good question very good question you can identify the wise person if the person respect you at you know all of us and we don't know who is wise who is not surely we need time to find out who is wise who is not uh, identifying anybody uh, is not very easy because uh, uh, at once you don't know there is no uh, label but through the association uh, for even for a short time association you know the wise person is very patient very kind honestly kind some people can be a patient and uh, kind to uh, find an opportunity to take advantage of you but the real wise person does not take advantage of you the patience compassionate giving you right advice and the uh, wise person makes a right very good wise decision for you when you consult when you ask questions and uh, by asking question by listening to that person by uh, observing the person's behavior uh, the how the person talk uh, uh, why how the person uh, conduct himself in public uh, and also you can observe the person for some times and then you can uh, guess that he is a wise person identifying wise person is not very easy very quickly but uh, uh, because they can hide their true nature uh, but for uh, after some times you will find out slowly and gradually using your eyes and ears and thinking when you put these two together that means how you saw the person what you heard the person said and then you can watch the person behavior to see whether what is said and how he behaves when you put them together in your own mind you can conclude that to some extent you can come to a certain reasonable decision that this person is a wise person Okay. 
that's a very good practical question. Okay, another question. <coughs> okay. Sometimes when there's like a foolish person and they say something like mean to you, like how do you like control yourself to like not get angry at that person? How you control yourself? What? Like sometimes a foolish person may say something mean to you um, and it might get you angry. So like how do you like control yourself and like not get angry and like very like frustrated? If somebody uh, says or does something that angers you, then uh, you got to watch your mind and ask, why do I get angry? I get angry because I don't understand the person, or I don't understand what he said. Perhaps the person may be under stress, the person may have some problem at home, person may have problems with his job, person may have not be person may not be quite well, and so forth we don't know all about that person. But we hear or see uh, once or twice may not be enough. We have to watch the repetition. Watch the person for a while. If the person repeats the same thing again and again, that is because of uh, his upbringing, his education, his background, his genetic condition, genes, all of which we don't know. Not knowing all these things, it is not right for us to get angry. And therefore, uh, we try to be wise, to be patient, and uh, observe if the person's behavior appears to be abnormal, dangerous, it is better to avoid that person. Or if possible, uh, try to draw attention of some professional person who can examine the person and uh, prescribe certain uh, remedies. But you always have to remain patient. That is the sign of wisdom. <laughs> Okay, very good question. Thank you. You're welcome. Your name is uh, Mahesh. Ma Mahali. Right? Mahal. Eh? Mahali. Mahali Abhay Vikrama. Okay. <coughs> How old are you? I'm ten years old. Eh? Ten years? I'm ten years old. Eh? Ten, ten? Yeah. Ten years old. Good. Any other question? Anybody else? Bhante, I have a question. Yes? So, if someone is bothering you and, like, uh, putting you into danger, how do you tell them to stop without hurting their feelings? Okay, very good question. If somebody is bothering you, and trying to lead you to dangerous situation, that person is not a wise person. Try not to associate with that person. Try to, uh, if possible, try to talk to that person with patience, without yourself getting angry. Uh, 
if that person is very young person then still uh, we that person needs to be corrected and uh, if the person uh, just tries to irritate you and deliberately make you upset some people do that just to enjoy they irritate to make you upset and then when you get when you get upset they, that person will be happy some people do that that is a very silly thing in that situation you remain very quiet calm relax without getting upset without getting angry then you will remain very wise person you will be wise person okay thank you you are welcome you anaya anaya koshvat right yeah yeah how old are you i'm 8 years old 8 years old Mm-hmm. Good questions. You all ask good questions. <coughs> Anybody else? I have a question. Yes. <coughs> Identify yourself. Yes, you are is. Uh, I'm Binal. Binal. Yes. Yeah. Okay. What is your question? Can a foolish person act as a wise person? Pinal, that is a very good question. If a foolish person behaves like a wise, for that reason he is foolish. Foolish person can never become, never behave like a wise. person always he shows his foolishness sooner or later he makes one mistake that he probably might hide then he makes another mistake thinking that other people can be cheated easily so he goes on committing more and more mistake without admitting that he is doing something foolish for that reason that person is foolish foolish person can never try to be wise they can always show up their foolishness if the person is foolish he admit his foolishness and think well i is this very silly thing i'm so sorry i shouldn't have done that he apologized to himself if he f- f- does something foolish to you he would come and apologize to you and said i am sorry i made a very silly mistake i did not intend to do that it is without my intention i just uh, you know happened to be like that i don't do i don't commit that kind of mistake again that's a wise person okay Very good, Binal. Thank you. You are welcome. Okay. Anybody else? I have a question. Yes. Can a foolish person become a wise person? Uh, say it again. Can a foolish person? Can a fool foolish person become a wise person? Oh sure. foolishness is not permanent things uh, uh, tasha foolishness also is temporary thing one one time foolish does not remain foolish all his life he gradually through experience learning from his own mistakes and uh, thinking very carefully slowly slowly he can become wise Uh, yes foolish person can become wise when they listen to the adults when they learn 
and when they learn from their own experience in life, they learn from the society, they learn from books, they learn from, the, from schools, uh, from teachers and so forth, and they learn from other wise people. If such a person is going to be wise, a foolish person, if does not change at all, remain to be foolish and committing more and more and more foolish things, then better not associate with such a person. Making foolish things one time and then correct it, change it and improve oneself, that is the person going to be wise person. Okay? Thank you. Oh, very good. Good question. How, how do you develop patience through like meditation? How do you practice patience? No, how do you develop patience through um, meditation? Ah, oh, very good question. <clears throat> when you meditate, uh, you see you are Impatience makes you suffer. When you are impatient, you do... Suppose you get... Uh, very quickly you get angry. And you say something at that time, very nasty thing to somebody. Then you regret later on. When you meditate, yeah, the words, words does not uh, uh, come to our mouth very quickly without the thinking. When we meditate, we train the mind. Many people, uh, uh, Maheli, uh, say, watch your tongue. Some people say when they do uh, say something wrong or offensive, people warn you, watch your tongue. But meditate and learn to watch the mind because tongue doesn't wag by itself. The thought arises in the mind first and then express that thought in words. When we meditate, we go to the root of that thought, root of that word. Root of that word starts in the mind. It is in the mind that anger arises, greed arises, confusion arises. With that state of mind, people say, greedy things, angry things, and confusing things. And therefore, when we meditate, we always watch the mind. Always watch the mind. That way we learn to be patient through the practice of meditation. I think that's also a very good question. We try to practice meditation. And uh, so we can see ourselves much more clearly than anybody else can see us. You see, meditation sees, shows us to see ourselves. Meditation teaches us to see ourselves. Okay? Okay, Is, thank you. I see Chandima's uh, name. Is Chandima there? Uh, yes, Bhante, I am Mahili's mother. Mahili's mother, yes. You have uh, a question? I have been listening and these are very golden advice, not only for children, but also for us. And uh, I am so <laughs> thankful for conducting this uh, Dhamma uh, talk, uh, Bhante. Chandima, very good. I am so happy. Yandima, I'm going to tell you all in December, from December to March next year, I take uh, seclusion. Uh, I stay alone, meditating, not uh, meeting people, not discussing anything that. I have been doing it for several years. But this year, since children are interested in learning Dhamma, I sacrifice this hour every Sunday for children. 
Oh, thank you so much, Bhante. It's, uh, it's yeah. the best uh, Dhamma Dayada for all of us. Uh, thank you. I want them to learn Dhamma and be wonderful, wonderful, healthy people. Uh, in not only physically, mentally, learning well, thinking well, being happy and uh, full of joy and happiness. I like them to be like that. Therefore, I give up one hour or sacrifice one hour for their sake. I don't teach adults after that till next uh, uh, March uh, from the beginning of December. But I continue children's class like this at uh, 3 o'clock every Sunday. Okay, children, and be punctual, come every Sunday, and if you uh, encourage other children also to come, ask them to come. Also, I like you all to learn Mangala Sutta. Most of your parents know Mangala Sutta by heart, and you try to learn one stanza a day. Uh, today we learn Asevanacha Balanam Pandita. You record it. You record it and listen to it later on and memorize. You have a cell phone. Uh, my friend Chandana, Chandana Gunatilika. There is Chandana Gunatilika records it. O Tusara record it. One of you record and share with others. Asivanach Balanang Pandita Nancha Sevana Puja cha puja niyanang etang mangala muttamang To associate not with the, with the foolish, to be with the wise, to honor the worthy ones, this is the blessing supreme. That is the meaning of that stanza. Memorize it. I, I explain two of these blessings and next Sunday I explain what puja to pujaniya means and who the worthy ones are. I explain next Sunday. Until then, I want to take your leave and continue your practice. Okay. Bye. Thank you, Bhante. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Bhante. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Buddha Saranai. Buddha Saranai. Thank Terwan you. Saranai, Bhante. Terwan Saranai. Okay, bye.